Hey there, it's Michael J. Um, a little while back I made a video documentary, I like to call them popumentaries because they're small and they pop up. <laughs> and um, it was about Adrian, the designer who did all of the costumes for The Wizard of Oz and many, many other films. Because I thought that there wasn't anything about him. There should be a major documentary about him. Well, I'm following that up with a new little popumentary about Edith Head, another wonderful costume designer in Hollywood who I adore. Um, the problem is that she uh, designed 1,100 films. And so how do you cover that? I mean, she started in the 1920s and went through the early 1980s. So uh, it's a big career. I've decided to sort of seclude my documentary into the years where she was working on the Alfred Hitchcock movies, which I also love. So I think I'm going to be talking as much about Alfred Hitchcock as I am Edith Head, but how Edith Head's work works with what Hitchcock is doing among his other geniuses. Now, Edith Head at this period, this is the mid-century modern period, the late 50s, early 60s, and she is doing a very clean, streamlined fashion design in these movies. They're contemporary films with contemporary settings and clothing and she is finding a way of really making especially the Hitchcock blondes in these movies uh, look fantastic in the simplest lines. But also the men look really great in these films. Um, they're just wearing suits and ties and hats like men do but there's something about the choices. The color choice against the background choice for example. How the suit fits. What tie is going with it. The, everybody's just so perfectly dressed. It's a fantasy world. Um, and certainly today people don't go around dressing up like this but that's sort of the glamour of it all that I love. This suit as a matter of fact is inspired by the movie Vertigo and when I really started going back to the movie Vertigo, I saw Jimmy Stewart sitting in the Eddie's bar with the red walls, uh, spying on Kim Novak. And everybody talks about the dress because she's wearing a, uh, an opera gown, and it's black and green against the red walls, and it looks fantastic. And then she had that striking blonde hair. But Jimmy Stewart is sitting in a blue suit and a red tie, having a drink at the bar, watching her, and that blue suit is magnificent looking, and it's the color of the blue. And, I w and I, so I went out looking for a blue suit, and I thought, I need a blue suit. I want to find a blue suit that color. They just weren't there, and I asked salespeople, and they said, uh, and I showed them the color, and they said, that's not on the market. They were all sort of dingy, grayed out, really dark blue suits, and that's what was going on. Now, the Mad Men craze came along, and after the Mad Men became really popular on TV, Everybody was emulating all those fashions, especially the men's suits, because they looked really sharp. And the character Pete in Mad Men, in the first couple seasons, wore a blue suit just like the one Jimmy Stewart wears in Vertigo. And so, um, lucky for me, because I was out looking for one, they suddenly came back on the market, and Tommy Hilfiger put out this blue suit that was sitting in Macy's at a reasonable price. In fact, I got it for 50% off. So I could have my Vertigo blue suit finally, and I love the color. It's, I don't know if you can really tell um, with this camera. It certainly doesn't match when you see a clip of Jimmy Stewart wearing it, because that was on film and in Technicolor, and it picks up the colors differently. But this is just the same type of blue uh, that you really see. Um, and so I'm thrilled. And that's why I'm wearing it for you today. But let's talk about Edith Head and the Alfred Hitchcock movies. In 1924, Edith Head, an art teacher at the time, was in need of a summer job. After seeing an ad in the LA Times that Paramount Pictures needed a sketch artist in the costume department, Edith showed up with a portfolio of her drawings, along with a lot of borrowed drawings from her art school friends. She was commended on her versatility and hired on the spot. On the first day of work, she confessed that not all the drawings were hers, and she was nervous about her sudden responsibilities. Of course, history tells us that she didn't have to worry. She was capable of the great diversity she pretended to possess. Edith learned how to read a script and map out a wardrobe plot for a movie. 
which would list the sequence in which it was used. The costumer could check off which phase of production the costume was in. These included whether a sketch had been made and approved, or if the outfit was ready to show to a director. Edith costumed 11 movies with Hitchcock. He dominated every scene of the films, including the fashion. They came to work together because they were both working at Paramount at the same time. Edith learned to please Hitchcock by simply following the descriptions of the clothes in the script. He was very specific, but when asked, he'd say, I really don't care. Whatever the script says. This is the first thing we see Grace Kelly wear in Rear Window. I remember seeing this for the first time in a movie theater in San Francisco, and when she walked into this dress, the audience began applauding. Those high heels, they'll be great in the jungle, and the nylons, and those six-ounce laundry. Three. All right, it's three. Well, they'll make a big hit in Finland just before you freeze to death. Well, if there's one thing I know, it's how to wear the proper clothes. This is a simple but elegant cocktail dress with diaphanous sleeves. Grace Kelly's character works for a fashion magazine, and so she's always dressed perfectly. Take a note at the color of this suit for future reference. I wish I could be creative. Oh, sweetie, you are. And here is the nightgown. What do you think? Which makes Grace Kelly look like a Greek goddess. I will rephrase the question. Thank you. You like it? Yes, I like it. Edith didn't use prints that often, but here we have a wonderful print on Doris Day. The setting of the film is in Morocco, so it's a warm summer evening in the desert, and this is a perfect dress in which to go out to dinner. Here's another light dress, casual, for walking around in the heat of the day. Doris Day only wears four costumes total in this film, and this gray silk suit is her travel clothes that she wears through the majority of the movie right up to the end of the big climax. Your ticket, madam? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking for someone. Hitchcock made Tippi Hedren into a movie star, and Edith Head designed a personal wardrobe for her to help her look like the movie star that Hitchcock needed her to be. Here is a simple black suit that she wears at the beginning of the film, but most of the film she's wearing the infamous green dress. Hitchcock thought green evoked a chaste, cool quality, and wanted that for Melanie, the character Tippi Hedren plays in The Birds. Edith picked a very particular yellow-green, Oudenil. This was also the color used for Grace Kelly's suit in Rear Window. Tippi Hedren's suit is less structured than Grace Kelly's, and a light-toned fur coat was added for travel purposes and to show Melanie's privilege and sense of materialism. Hitchcock wanted a gray suit for Kim Novak because he wanted her to seem mysterious, as if she had materialized from the San Francisco fog. Also, the gray suit allows Kim Novak to really be the focal point in this very colorful scene of flowers. Novak thought the suit was very restrictive and the black shoes disconnected her from herself. She later reflected that these things were perfect for a character who was pretending to be someone she wasn't.
led to wonder if Kim Novak's character is possessed by a ghost, and this beautiful white overcoat sort of gives that impression of ghostly mystery, and you can see that scarf. It's very light, and you can see through it, and it's like a shadow wisping up into the air in the wind. And the black and green opera gown, which is gorgeous, but only seen for the briefest of moments in the film. There are many other films that Edith did with Hitchcock, and I won't go into them all, but others were Notorious, To Catch a Thief, The Trouble with Harry, Torn Curtain, Marnie, Topaz, and Family Plot. Edith died on October 24th, 1981, shortly after wrapping up her final film, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. The career had spanned nearly six decades. She was nominated for 35 Academy Awards and won eight. This is why we're still interested in Edith Head. Her contribution to films is as great as any other you could name.